Hello! Welcome once again to the McDrunga YouTube channel. Today we're looking at the DJI RC2 controller and some helpful tips, tricks, features and functions. If you're an experienced user of this controller, you may already know most or all of these, but you never know, you might pick up a trick or tip, so please keep watching. And if you're new to DJI or the RC2 controller, then hopefully this video can give you some pointers along the way. If you stick around till the end of the video, I'll show you a massively helpful and little known feature of this controller. So with that said, let's dive in and crack on with the video. So let's get the boring nerdy specification part out of the way first. So the RC2 weighs in at 420 grams with a 5.5 inch full HD 60 frames per second screen and 32 gigabytes of internal memory. The battery on the controller lasts about 3 hours on a single charge and takes about 1 and a half hours to charge from zero to full battery. It uses DJI's OcuSync 4 transmission system, which is their most stable transmission system to date and gives you better signal between your drone and the controller. The RC2 uses an Android operating system, which means it's pretty intuitive to operate and quick to transition between different screens and functions. And DJI have confirmed guaranteed software updates for the controller until the 31st of December 2026. So the first thing I want to show you is if you press the power button once, it illuminates the green lights to show you roughly how much charge is left in the controller. I'll put a table on the screen for you to see how each light being illuminated corresponds with the battery level. Essentially though, each light represents 25% worth of charge. You also have status LEDs and warning and error LEDs. I'll put these two tables up on the screen and you can pause and have a look at them at your leisure. If you'd like more accurate battery information, when you have your controller switched on, swipe down from the top of the screen once to see the battery percentage, as you can see here. If you swipe down a second time, it gives you this screen with some further options, including Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Airplane Mode, Mute, Screen Record and Screenshot functions. The left side of the screen will show any notifications and updates etc available, or if your compass requires calibrated. The little cog in the top right also opens up a further options screen where additionally you can access the storage and the compass calibration options, as well as the system option to change date and time etc. Ok, so now on to the functions that I really want to talk about. So function number one, viewing cache files. You may or may not know, but when you've got your drone in the air and you hit record, the controller saves a compressed cache file of each recording. Now this means that you can review your recordings while you're out and about and allows you to check if you've captured the shots that you wanted. To view these cache files is dead easy. Firstly, select Album. It will usually show this screen saying no photos or videos, but don't worry. Just tap Aircraft Album and it will take you to this screen showing all the cache recordings. They are saved by date as you can see at the top of each batch and you can also see at the bottom of each thumbnail it shows the duration of the clips. To view a clip, simply tap on it and it will open up to full screen. From there, just tap on the play icon. When the clip is playing, you can tap on the screen to bring up the slider bar at the bottom to allow you to go forward or back within the clip. If you pause the clip, it shows the date and time it was recorded at the top of the screen and you can also select this clip as a favourite by tapping the love heart. Transfer it to a phone or tablet by tapping the controller icon or delete the clip by tapping the trash can icon in the bottom left. If you want to transfer the clip to a phone or tablet, you need to have the DJI Fly app installed on that device, but I'll come back to that a little later. So let's move on to function two, delete and batch delete. So because the controller records a clip each time you hit the record button for the drone, it's important to do a bit of housekeeping every now and then and delete any files you don't need. This saves you clogging up either the internal memory of the controller or the SD card if you have one installed. Deleting the files is simple and you don't need to go into each clip individually to access the trash can option. You simply tap on the tick box in the top right of the screen and this then allows you to select the individual clips you want to delete. Once selected, just tap on the trash can icon in the bottom left. Alternatively, if you want to delete a whole day's worth of clips, you can batch delete them. Again, 
Tap on the tick box in the top right and you'll see the batch delete option in blue text at the top right of each set of clips. Tap on this and it selects a whole batch of clips for that day. You can also deselect any clips in that batch that you may want to keep. Once you've selected the clips you want to delete, again just tap on the trash can icon in the bottom left. Ok, let's move on to function 3 and look at how to transfer files to your phone or tablet. Now this could not be easier so long as you have the DJI Fly app installed on your device. This makes use of the controller's wireless connectivity so make sure you have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turned on on your device. Once you've done that it's as simple as selecting the files from the media folders on the controller that you want to transfer before then tapping on the controller icon in the bottom right. You can also batch select these the same way you would to delete the batch. A QR code then pops up that you will need to scan with your phone or tablet. To do this, open up the DJI Fly app on your device and go into the Albums file. Tap on the little file transfer icon in the top right which then brings up this little box. Simply tap on Scan QR Code and use your device to scan the code on your controller screen. Hey presto, the files will quickly transfer from the controller to your device and can then be found within the Fly app and usually automatically also save to your media or gallery app on your phone. Now swiftly moving on to function 4, viewing flight paths or flight logs. These can be a handy thing if you have any issues with your drone performance, particularly if you encounter a flyaway. To access these, select Profile at the bottom of the screen and from here select More on the bottom left. This takes you to this screen which is a list of your flights. Tap on whatever flight you want to look at and this is basically an overview of your flight path. The screen contains various information starting from the top left, you have the flight mode you were in, how many satellites are connected, transmission strength between the drone and controller, battery percentage and flight time remaining. The icons on the right from top to bottom are the control sticks view on and off so you can see what movements you are making on the controller, toggle between home point or drone and finally toggle between standard or satellite view. Along the bottom from left to right you have the height and distance of the drone from the home point. Below that you have a speed option for the playback that you can toggle between 1 times, 2 times, 4 times or 8 times. Standard play, pause and next or previous video controls. There's a slider bar along the bottom you can use to move forward or back through the flight. And on the bottom right it shows the drone you are using next to the date and time of the flight. You can also pinch the screen to zoom in or out and swipe over it to move it around. The flight log will also show any warning messages that would have appeared during your flight. Low battery, strong wind etc. You can also be a little creative with flight logs. And if you want to see what I mean by that, there's a link to a flight log I made using waypoints in the description below. I'll also include the hot link on the video end screen as well. And if you want to delete any of your flight logs, you go into this screen with the list, swipe left on the flight log you want to delete and hit the trash can icon. Simple as that. And that brings us to the penultimate function number 5, waypoints. So did you know that you can create waypoints from the comfort of your own home and without having your drone turned on? Well you can and it's simple. From your home screen, tap on connect to aircraft and then on camera view. This then brings up a black screen but still with the compass, attitude indicator or map in the bottom left. It's the map display that we want here so select that by tapping on it to increase it to full screen. From here, select within the map where you'd like to create your waypoint mission and once you've done this, you can tap on the little squiggly line on the left side of the screen. This opens up your Waypoints Missions menu at the bottom of the screen and from here it's as simple as tapping the screen to place your waypoints. For a more detailed tutorial on how to create a waypoints mission, including POIs and changing speed, direction, altitude etc, take a look at the link in the video description for my waypoints tutorial. I'll also include this link at the end of the video. And this brings me nicely onto the bonus feature which is the most helpful feature I mentioned at the start of the video, 
because if you're creating waypoints on the controller, this is an absolute game changer. Did you know that you can connect a USB-C mouse to the controller? Well, you can. I've been using one throughout this video to point and click on the controller's screen icons, hence why you've seen a cursor on the screen, if you thought that was a little strange. It's simply plug and play. Connect the mouse to the USB-C port on the bottom of the controller, and the controller recognises it and it works seamlessly. This is a huge benefit when creating waypoints missions on the controller screen as it's so much easier to place the waypoints and move them to exactly where you want them to be. If you don't have a USB-C controller and you merely have a USB controller, you can grab one of these little cables that converts USB to USB-C. They're a couple of pounds off Amazon and I'll include the link in the description below. Alternatively, if you have a Bluetooth mouse, you can connect that directly to the controller via Bluetooth. And again, it's plug and play and works seamlessly. So there you have it. Some helpful tips to using the controller while you're sat on your couch and without the need to have your drone turned on or connected. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like me to cover. And if you've made it this far, please consider liking and subscribing. I'd love to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of 2025. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.